game-saving bets. Online betting for every eSports fan. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, CSGO and Overwatch, StarCraft 2, the choice is yours. Express bets for multiple matches or live bets on the game you are watching right now. Know your way around Dota 2? Make a prediction for picks and bets. Playing CSGO? Guess the number of rounds in a certain match. Daily quests for all participants and all the best choice of payment systems. More than 600,000 users have already made their bets on the spectacular matches since 2011. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we go. Final game of the night coming at you. Team Freedom taking on Team NP here in this best of three series, this being game number three, of course, hence the final game. Dota Pit League Season 5 coverage coming at you for the American qualifiers. Uh, again, these two teams competing to try to advance on to the winner bracket finals. The loser's still in it, just moving down to, well, the loser's bracket. So, or as it's called here, the lower bracket being a PC here. Um, EG did defeat C uh, Complexity earlier today. Two games to one, though. So, again, going the distance in both of these games here. Looking forward to seeing how this one plays out now. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by CCNC as my co-caster. All right, we've made it to the final game of the night. How's this one going to go? Well, I, you know, NP, they, they, they got to respond now, that's for sure, after that game. Yeah, they um, Freedom made a statement. They said, "Hey, we're not gonna we're not gonna be pushovers this whole series." So, if they finally don't ban Timbersaw, it's gotten banned in all five games previously, and five NP NP snatched it up for MSS. Timbersaw legend. Oh yeah, is that the, is that legit? MSS uh, he, he, he's, he's he's pretty good at Timbersaw. He owned in a couple of the games in the Boston Major. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm looking back right here. Yeah, they went 5-1 and one with this hero in a very recent play. So, yeah, most of those were actually the, the Boston Major, as you pointed out. Um, yeah, in fact, they went undefeated with it. So, dang. Well, on the spot insight there. Three of those were against complexity, though. So, eh. You know, it doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I love complexity, guys. Come on. Just a fun little jab there. Uh, no, but... Uh, yeah, seeing the Timber Saw, that's going to be fun to see in the hands of MSS. Was that a first pick Undying, or was it a first pick Marana? First pick Potom. It was Marana, okay. And then so the Undying Crystal Maiden. Now, we've Ten been seeing Crystal Maiden remaining. ban both of the games by NP. So this time it's left open, though. Five seconds remaining. And Freedom gets it. So well, what's the deal with that? I mean, is that just kind of their flavor support? Uh, a lot of teams have been picking Not that hero more. Uh, what's his name? Nuts on Faceless, the uh, Ice 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 Black team. 
has been playing Crystal Main a lot. He plays Crystal Main, and he plays one other hero like a whole lot. And some other hero, some other teams been picking up. I think China has been picking CM more. The hero's just sort of been coming back into popularity as she is really, really strong. Are on that level three mark and a little bit afterwards. The aura is super nice. Uh, it's it's good with undying. You know, that's only one hero so far, but lets them spam a lot of decays. Uh, and just makes Toria doesn't have to go back to base too much in the mid game. And just in general, the hero has some nice spells. The frostbite is a nice catch. Nova is a decent spell with some movement slow, some attack slow. So overall, just a, a pretty good hero that's good in lane, can also farm jungles. It's very flexible at what she can do. Yeah, and the aura definitely, again, yeah, powerful as you're getting at, too, just for the help and the support of the team as a whole. And going to be helpful for the likes of OD, picked up in that third spot here for uh, for Team Freedom. So uh, Marana, you'd expect to probably be more of that two Marana in the middle, perhaps. I guess could be the roaming, the four Marana as well. Five but uh, is Marana a good matchup against OD, I guess, is what I'm getting at there? Or would they rather have another mid now? Um, it's alright. As far as the lane goes, it's OD favored. Not too much after the damage nerfs and the armor nerf, but it is definitely still OD favored. Maybe 60-40, something like that. In the mid game, as far as that goes, it's fine for Marana. You can burst the OD down sometimes, but... And the OD isn't great versus you because the invis works quite well versus the OD. Uh, forces you to have a lot of detection, so sometimes the arcane orb hits will get disjointed. And it's sort of a pain for an immobile hero like OD to deal with. So, so Marana is all right versus the uh, OD, but I think EE does typically play the bottom. I haven't seen one for three seven or SVG play it. It's almost okay. always the uh, the EE bottom, especially whenever they first pick it. So, they may end up last picking Aoi's hero and taking their two supports here. We'll we'll see what happens, but. But yeah, I think it's mid bottom. Okay. That third pick here for Team NP, putting some good thought into it, using a bit of the reserve time yet again. I feel like uh, this is where, yeah, generally a lot of similarities with the drafting as far as it, it gets to this third pick, and that's where things kind of, you know, it takes a, a bit longer. It's understandable. I mean, it is kind of that that shifting pick. Obviously, you know, the first two, you know, pretty, pretty given for the most part, but now is where it kind of set up the draft here as a whole, so. Wants to make sure so they're good here with the Ursa, the Batrider bands, and he had Juggernaut, and once again the Vengeful band there. It's good. We saw them in the first game, just dominated with Team NP. I mean, just overall though, but not giving that up. Yep, they uh, they also banned the Batrider, banning out Ike's offliner. So the Sand King and the Batrider are both gone. Oh, they're going for the Sven. Dire team pick. There we go. Sven's been a popular carry, I believe, especially for Team NP. Yeah, they like this Tricor quite a bit. I think uh, they did this Tricor at least one other time in the uh, the Boston Major qualifiers. They're on mid bottom, and they'll do like safe lane solo timber saw while they'll run an aggro tri lane. I remember they got first blood on Swindles in the bottom lane, and uh, it's just nice. Like it's a lot of burst damage, multiple stuns. You can Sky spend stun. Yep, yeah, they, they pick Skyrath too. This is almost Dying an identical draft. Skyrath is one of the best heroes in the game versus OD, if not the best, because you just have tons of damage versus the OD, and the silence sort of counters everything he does. He does no damage when he's silenced. He can't save himself or other heroes. It just totally shuts him down, and the Skyrath is very strong early game, which OD is, is probably OD's weakest stage is the early game, getting punished early. Also good versus Five the Void. Um, overall, a really nice pick, and it's sort of they, they, they seem to like these heroes because this is almost an identical draft. Yeah, you know, I'm actually I was kind of looking through their their history with Sven especially, and I'm actually seeing that game I think you're talking about where they actually ran it against, against Complexity. Uh, they ran with an Ogre Magi that was their fifth hero, but obviously he's banned here, not going to be seen. So now, what hero are we going to have in place of Ogre? Is kind of the question uh, for Team NP for that uh, secondary support even for them. So. Yeah, I'll have to see. I think uh, I think that's some Ix Mike faces Void. BSG doesn't really play that hero, so I'm not sure what they're gonna go for. Are the heroes BSG plays that are left? Slark's pretty mediocre here. Slark Void is one of the worst carry offliner combos in the game, just because you don't really do any damage inside of the Chrono. You know, you both do sort of do the same thing. You go in, you like blow up hero. It's it's just not great. Um, maybe the Terror Blade. Looking at this game, but they have so much burst damage, they're just... I'm not really sure what carrier they're going to go for. We'll see if NP has the same feelings as me, or if they think it's a safe lane void. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, their final bang coming out here again. Ten seconds put some thought into this one. This has been, again, our final game of the night. Still in it if you lose here, but... 
This sets you up with a matchup against EG, which <laughs> is no nothing easy by any means, but you know, let's see yeah, if he can make it through the winner's bracket a little, little bit easier overall. Sniper ban. Radiant. Okay, so they think it's the OD safe lane. Okay. Huh. Okay, so yeah. yeah this is this is definitely a good sniper game. Uh, very good versus the Sven. None of NP's heroes are good at getting on top of the sniper. Also works super well with Chrono and Undying heroes. They can zone out the other heroes really easily. Just uh, overall an annoying hero and super good at defending high ground combined with the Chronosphere just makes it almost impossible for a lineup with Sven as your base breaker to go high ground. So now the final pick again, you figure it's gonna replace what was the Ogre Magic in the lineup more that for support remain. here. Yeah, they may go for that support Slardar again. Elder Titan. Hmm. Alright, buffing up a lot of their magical damage. Um, can do pretty well in the lanes. Helps set up for arrows. Sets up for, you know, Sven to walk up and stun. Chakram, stuff like that. So overall, just a pretty nice hero. Gives them some AoE control. Ten seconds remaining. Just, uh, just a nice pick, you know. Yeah, so you know, for the Five final pick, it's one of those remaining. options. It's like, it's... Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Good option. Omni Knight final pick. So it is BSJ Void. Okay. IX go. Mike Omni Knight. Wow. <laughs> Who saw that coming? He's not an Omni Knight player, I take it. No, he's an Omni Knight player. Oh, he is? I'm, I'm, no, that was an unironic wow. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I I kind of worry for Freedom's lanes. They NP always make sure they put this Timber versus the other hero because Timber just doesn't lose to other uh, other offliners one v one, and they're gonna do some sort of aggro try. Even though their aggro try is like it's not amazing, it's pretty good, and this Timber is gonna win that lane. Me a lot of times will rotate to that try lane uh, reasonably early on, try and kill it. Uh, overall, I think that's what they're gonna try and go for. We'll have to see if Freedom is willing to take that fight against the tri lane or if they're gonna dodge. But Void, not the greatest tri lane hero. Really, all he offers is right clicks early on, so. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Game number three. Again, final game of the night. Coming at you, Tomato. Getting his hands on that. Oh, damn it. Overall, in the series, is definitely done. Very solid. Again, even in the first game, he was playing that, uh, that techies there, so the, the young. Prodigy for Team Freedom. So far, I think it's safe to say, having a pretty good series against the likes of NP. Top lane smoke coming out from NP. Undying Eagle knows what's up. Yeah, he's going to spot it and then run. They did this in the other game, too. They smoke up whenever they do this draft, and they go and they leave with the Sven's on oh. into the pot of arrow, and they get the first blood. We'll see if it works again. Oh, oh BSJ, did you watch that replay? <laughs> run, dude. Run. Oh, he didn't watch run! the replay. Run! No! <laughs> he ran right into them. He did. We're gonna see a, basically about a pre, a pre room first blood of every all three games now. He's had the first two, and whoever got it won the game. I'm just saying. So. That's true. BSJ, you may have just cost your team the game. <laughs> that's that's GG. No. Uh, yeah, that's uh, not the best of starts, but he was not watching the replay, as you said. Yeah, they did that exact same thing. It's interesting. They sort of. Uh, just rinse and repeating that draft. We'll see if it works as well as it did in that game. It, it ended up working pretty well. MSS got massively farmed and just sort of owned. And it looks like they are, the uh, like I said, putting this timber up against the Omni Knight. So getting that 1v1 matchup. And uh, maybe the Undying will help down to the bot lane or they'll sit up there and help this void. But so far, the lane's looking pretty good. This mid lane is going to go okay for Potom, not amazing. Top lane should do very well. And the timber saw, of course, will do very well as he is one of the strongest laners in the game. This middle lane matchup here again, blocking the creep wave all the way too, but a little bit better on the side of Tomato there. So Marana, here comes the box out from Eagle on that Undying. Crystal Maiden going to be busy doing a little bit of jungle herself, taking advantage of that Frostbite ability. Guess that's, uh, you know, definitely a strength of perhaps an earlier on uh, Crystal Maiden. Can farm effectively by herself with that, uh, with that W. Yeah, this seems like Freedom's, uh, the strat they have against NP. They just camp NP and wreck his early landing stage. Give Tomato a really good start. Eagle, um, like we said before, an, an expert at mid-sitting and showing off in this series. After that first game, realizing, 
hey, they, uh, their, their other lanes are really, really strong all the time, and, you know, not really lanes we can pressure or change that much, so I'm just gonna go sit mid and ruin EE's game. Yeah. Oh, well, he's definitely being a nuisance early on, that's for sure. I mean, E, you see 3-0, and OD 4-3, and so again, very, very early here, but constantly providing that decay, and see down to 380 life now and counting, so... Just to be a little bit careful right here, Eagle. He had, had a gank going around with that decay. And he's going to throw it out. So <laughs> he really is just keeping that harassment up. It's kind of fun to watch as a spectator, but probably not so fun to play against in that case there. So, Owie, uh, what kind of build, uh, what kind of talent build, skill build even, should we see on Sven, you think? Is he going to get that greater cleave kind of leveled up or, for farming purposes or, or what? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only build you can go on this hero. Some people will, sometimes people will deviate a little bit by getting two points in the stun if they need a little bit more Double burst damage to kill. So he may look at doing that, but other than that, yeah, you have to max the cleaver. This hero is just completely useless without farm. Yeah. He's a hero that needs to be ahead, or he's just too easy to kite, doesn't have the burst damage to blow heroes up, which is sort of what Sven's all about. Just two shotting heroes, being really tanky with that war cry and just charging in. Well, I could get that Echo Saber. Plenty of damage come out there. So yeah, you see Eagle now the top lane, obviously Crystal Maiden rotating more so to the, to the middle lane right here. Has it level 3 as well. Going to take some pressure from Skyrath Mage, throwing out some Arcane Bolts. But we'll be fine. Top lane, it constantly looks like there's action up here, but no, they just have an all the melee here, so they're really on top of each other. it has got Owie uh, popping that battle, or Warcry, excuse me. Just simply kind of scare them off, getting that armor buff, but not necessarily going to have a lot come out of it. He's out of mana currently. He does have a mango on him, though, yeah. Which, uh, able to get that burst of mana back, of course. So there's that great cleave now leveled. And ideally, that'll start kicking in. How's this bottom matchup going, though? We got Timbersall 13 and 2, Omni Knight 10 and 1 so far. Would you say that's expected here, Timbersall, this slight advantage? Yeah, they're, they're both going to farm. There's not really much the either hero can do to zone each other out of the lane early on. When this Timber gets 6, things can change a little bit because you can start spamming the Chakram if the Timber has a slight lead on CS, but if the Omni Knight gets to his Arcane Boots or his Soul Ring or whatever mana item he's going early on, yeah, it looks like he's going the Soul Ring, so if he can get to that, then he can just spam heals on his self repels and he'll be fine, but if MSS can get an early enough gap in the CS to where he can get more mana regen than the uh, Omni Knight and sort of spam him down with the Chakram, sometimes you can pressure a kill or force the Omni back to base and sort of continue to open up that that uh, net worth gap, but as is, it's it's pretty even. Seems kind of boxing him out right there. Obviously, yeah, Undying getting picked up at the top lane. A great rotation coming out from Skyrath Mage, really rotating all the way around. There's no vision up here, as you can see, uh, from Team Freedom, that is. And that allowed Skyrath Mage to kind of get in the flank position and help set up that kill onto the, uh, the Undying, who was just a little bit too far up at that point. So, takes advantage, and now Skyrath sitting in the middle lane. Almost level three here. Yeah, Tomato smells something, but it looks like he may end up getting caught using the, the uh, Astral, and it's probably going to go down now. Yeah, but especially with the Elder Titan behind, there's a sleep, and nothing uh, more he can do at that point. So, easy arrow set up, and down goes OD. So, yeah, got a little too comfortable himself pushing up. Yeah, the rotations have been really on point. This is definitely going to take a flashing back a little bit to the first game. The early progression here of NP. I mean, I guess all three games have kind of been this way now. Because uh, even last game, Freedom actually got up to a great start in with their roam. And uh, harassment and the early kills there. So, But it's NP's favor this time around. And now Skyrath coming to the top lane. In fact, Faceless is going in pretty aggressive right here. Crystal Maiden has a Frostbite. They're trying to reach, but now Skyrath beating it. Puts the silence out. All of a sudden, Crystal Maiden, the one is that's on the run right here. The stop comes out from the other time. They're trying to kill that tombstone. They will do so. Getting that nice bounty. Can they finish off Juby? They do lose Elder Titan. And Sven in pursuit, though. Not going to do enough damage, however. He takes a Frostbite, but now here comes Marana, and that will secure the kill on a Crystal Maiden. So, in the end, they do come through. Yeah, it's a rotation that he likes to do quite often. He'll find a rune, or even not a rune, he'll run up to that tri lane and, you know, make a fight happen. But the, um, the stick on the CM as well as the decay heal on, or the soul rip heal on to the CM. Kept him alive for quite a while. Skyrath ran out of mana, so the, s the steady flow of nukes stopped, and we're able to make it a one-for-one one with E having the rotation, so a nice trade for freedom. Tomato catching up in some farm after that early death. Nice to see, as in Vogue, or as OD, not a great hero from behind, but 
a very, very nice hero whenever you're ahead. Yeah. Uh, level 6 now picks up that Arcanist match in, so see if he can make any plays with that. But uh, Crystal Maiden is roaming on through. It's level 4 currently. Headed towards that bottom rune area. I was going to say hello to Elder Titan. As I'm dying nearby as well. But bottom lane, again, Omni Knight and Timbersaw, it's almost like there's just there's just no other game going on around them. They're, this is their lane, and that's all they're dealing with at this point so far. But as I say this, Timbersaw now going to realize that there's other players in this game. Out comes the slow, the frostbite going to hit, but not close enough. Not worth the dive right there. So Timbersaw will be fine. And that armor kind of kicking in too. It's level four right now, the reactive armor. And he heals right back up. So he's good to go. Not a big deal for him. But yeah, it's Timbersaw. Kind of joking about that a little bit, but mobility of Timbersaw, I mean, earlier on in the game, should they be looking to do more of that now? He has a shock rim here. Getting involved, perhaps? Um, probably not. He's probably just going to sit in the safe lane and farm up for as long as he can. Things are getting sort of rough right now with this Omni Knight hitting repel after, or purification after purification. So the 360 pure damage really slicing through the timber, but immediately healing back up with the level 4 reactor armor every time. So not too big of a deal for him. <laughs> He wants to get harassed right there. The Shocker comes out, the nice sleep on top of that, and now Crystal made it in trouble. He does have that repel up, but is it going to be enough? The chase is successful. However, now in comes that Chronos Spear. But whether or not they have enough damage, that's the big question. Purification used to stop. Nice dodge, though, by BSJ with the time walk, and he secures the kill as a result. Very well played on his part. Timber saw, of course, going to be fine, but at least, at least they get the turn kill. On to the Elder. Yeah. It was a nice play. The only issue with this is really is that they can't force this timber out the lane and they can't really pressure the tower either. So they get the kill, but nothing else is really going to come of it. And Sven now has space to free farm up in this top lane. You know, everyone else knows the chrono is down. So, you know, he does get a kill with his first chrono, but it puts two of your cores in one lane with both of them, you know, not really able to do anything from here. So not the, not the most amazing, but as I say, that Omni TV is up to top. So sort of fixing that and now going to situate the Void down here in this bottom lane, but Void at this point is not a hero that can lane burst the Timbersaw with the Arcanes and the Soul Ring up. Wow, that arrow almost hitting Omni Knight at the top. That's a that's a kill for sure, but we'll miss it instead. No time tries for a stomp, just simply harassment, not going to connect, and they're not going to get any kills as a result of that. So well played right there on the side of Freedom. But yes, you're talking about Timbersaw. He's just still loving life down here. Picks up the Arcane Boots off to the side of that to go with the Soul Ring. He's got plenty of mana to work with, and uh, uh, again, so his farm, MSS, this this godly Timbersaw being played by MSS. Kind of seeing the progress of it right now, and that's going to be bad news bears for Team Freedom over here. Sven, haven't really talked too much about his progress as that uh, Helm of the Dominator in the works, it looks like. The Helm of Iron Will picked up. Um, but yeah, probably going to be an Echo Saber after that, I would assume. <laughs> Yeah, they already have quite a few ancient stacks going. So whenever he does get like level eight, level nine, has more levels in Warcry, they're probably going to uh, take the ancients. I doubt after what happened at the major, how he's ever going to die to the ancients again. So <laughs> gonna make sure he has enough levels in Warcry to survive, get that big first gold income you get from the ancients, which puts Sven so far ahead. God, yeah, you see this timber solo. It's just crazy to see him like at full life and, and just so much mana as well because of the region that he has and the arcane boots and the soul ring. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how uh, how sustainable he is by himself. Now he needs to be careful not to get too comfortable here. I mean, he's pushing up pretty far, and there is a crystal maiden nearby, kind of roaming in. So I guess he's not necessarily too worried about being again level four reactive armor. They would need a lot of damage uh, to really do him in, and just those two probably not enough. Dyer's bottom tower under attack. Yeah, this is like one of the best things about doing this, um, doing the aggro try in the safe lane solo timber saw is that you're basically just unkillable with the max reactor armor, the 144 build. So you can just sort of sit in that offlane, do whatever you want, and very hard to kill. But as I say that, they have the chrono up. Yeah, he got caught by the timber chain. He was trying to use it right there, but he got frostbitten and actually is going to be killed. No, the timber chain to the last second. The stop, and then the earth splitter comes out from Elder Titan. And Timbersaw actually is going to live. The charges of the reactive armor. You see uh, Eagle right there attempting to use the soul rip or the decay even to try to kill him, but it's just not enough. So well played in getting away. I was going to say that was a little bit uh, quick right there. On that was porting in right as the invis Crystal Maiden was coming in. And if he just waited just a, a second longer, they might have got a better opening right there. But they still almost got the kill, but despite that. Uh, but obviously not enough. Meanwhile, top lane, actually, the Arctic Seal Silence on a Faceless Void. 
Sven cannot get close enough, however, to throw out that Stormhammer. And he will be fine there. But yeah, living throughout all that at the bottom lane. I mean, that was so many resources used, really, by Freedom to get nothing out of it. Yeah, definitely really, really nice rotation from SVG. The OD actually uh, went Midas, something I really, really like. Um, a lot of OD players are starting doing that more recently. SCCCC, uh, I think I said one too many C, but he does that build nowadays. Um, because OD, just as a hero, whenever you go that drums build, you run out of net worth, or, or your net worth slows down quite greatly after the laning stage. You don't farm super fast, and he's a hero that also really benefits from levels and attack speed. So Midas overall, just a nice item on the hero. It helps you fight as well because of the attack speed, because you get to your, you know, higher levels in Arcane or in the, uh, passive faster. And so, it makes you do more damage, as well as letting you scale better in the late game, especially in a game like this where he is their, their big right click heavy core until this OD gets more, I mean, until this, uh, Void gets more items in the late game. Because right now he's just sort of a chrono machine working on that. Vlad's not really a strong hero right now compared to the Sven who almost has the Echo Saber, so... I like that build from, uh, from Tomato adapting to the situation. Yeah, and you know, tower kills, well, speaking of Sven, obviously they're progressing him so much further. Elder Tyna up here is trying to find an opportunity. Can't really do that though, instead Sven will kind of steal a bit of the jungle. Um, you also talk about those ancients, currently not stacked. I don't know if they've already done those or not. But uh, yeah, just the single set currently, but... Again, he has that Oblivion Staff, so the Echo Saber just around the corner now. Um, he also has a, a Seder here that's going to assist and do that ancient stacking, ideally. Crystal Maiden's kind of roaming through by herself in the jungle. She does get a ward down. Pretty aggressive one at that before falling back. Now his bottom lane. Nope. Just Timber Saw again. He, he doesn't even know other lanes are in this game. Why, why, why should he? I mean, he's doing fine down here. Still at the bottom. Yeah, Envy TV. actually snooping around in the dire jungle, takes one of their stacks, forces the CM TP in, leaps away and barely TPs out, so nice rotation, forces the CM to come up to this top lane, as well as takes their stack, so continuing to just mess around, and he almost, or uh, about halfway to that egg scepter, only two components missing, has the point booster on a thousand gold, so well on his way. That Echo Saber now finished on Sven as well. He's going to be joined, actually. By the, uh, by the Skyrath Mage here. Got that speed aura to work with, so that's kind of a... Is that, is that a mini that we see often? I mean, it has the Kobold here with the speed aura. I feel like that's yeah, not... Yeah, it's, like, it? it's, it's quite It's quite nice on uh, less mobile carries. The only the only good ones you can get, really, are the Ice Armor, the Kobold, and the Alpha Wolf. And the Sven already has so much damage, he doesn't really need the Alpha Wolf and the, the, the Ice Armor one is nice, but it only becomes better later into the game. So yeah, having the Cobalt early on speeds up your farm and it's just nice for early fighting. Yeah, meanwhile, Omni Knight goes down to the bottom lane. It looks like they were attempting to almost dive this Timbersaw. He yet again survives, gets the turn kills, the ports come in, and they take out Undying on top of that. So again, the Timbersaw really feels like he's somewhat of the MVP earlier on in this game. He's causing so much distraction down here. To still have zero death seems pretty absurd. The fact that he's level 11 on top of that, his net worth is up there at 5,100. Third in, on his team, actually, which, you know, is, is still saying quite a bit, considering both uh, Marana as well as Sven are doing fantastic even. So, forward in the background, that's Omni Knight right there. Stormbolt uh, Hammer even will hit on to Undying Meanwhile, and there is the Mystic Flare to finish off Undying right there coming out from the Skyrath Mage. They also catch Crystal Maiden. And the Earth Splitter just helping to harass and keep out Omni Knight from that fight on top of that. So, momentum continues more so for NP, and they want more damage. Silence on Omni Knight right there. The stop coming out. It will connect. And Elder Titan secures that kill. Yeah, this is the MP that we remember from game one now. Yeah, they, um, Freedom thought they could take this Timber Saw, but so far showing that they aren't really that well equipped to deal with it. It's just so hard to punish whenever. You just sit in that safe lane, you take the early tower, have the four points up in reactive armor, and farm that quick bloodstone that he almost has. It's uh, just a super strong hero that's a pain to deal with at all times in the game. Okay, yeah, this is just uh, for freedom. It's, uh, what, getting the farm on a faceless void is something that uh, they, could, they could definitely use here, going to back to that idea of the damage you were talking about that earlier, where it needs quite a bit. That's where OD, ideally, for the time being, is able to be a bit of that, but Timbersaw bought him. Yeah, he ports out before they are able to catch him here, but... Yeah, he actually has the full Bloodstone now, so... 
very, very strong. NP probably going to be looking for a fight with this uh, Ags on bottom and the Bloodstone on the Timber Saw. Going to be a really, really nice timing as well as having the Blink and the Echo Saber on the Sven after he clears up this Ancient Stack. So, really nice timing Radiant green for MP and Freedom at this point. Attack. Just looking for a small skirmish, just getting a kill with Chrono every time it's up, but MP not really allowing them to do that, grouping up, making sure they get their item timings, and they're going to fight on their terms as they are the team Radiant in control right now. There's that bottom tower kill, at least, in favor of Freedom. So, getting some objective done, their first tower kill of the game. But obviously, you see the MP going further now. Timbersaw is pushing in that middle by himself. And he feels very confident, even as the infused rain drops on top of him to help stay alive if he was to get jumped right here. In fact, there's several throughout uh, the lineup here of NP. In the earlier game, I'll see Skyrath Mage with some of his own, as well as Elder Titan. So, making that a higher priority in the earlier game here. And now here goes the top attack. secondary tower. They are doing Roshan meanwhile. They're going to kill it, it looks like, but will they trade a secondary Roshan tower for it? Uh, fortification Dyer's is still ready. Is under attack. So yeah, we'll, we'll see if they come up here and try and fight. The bottom is very, very low on mana, so he's not going to be super useful if they come to fight, but they're going to be just a little bit too late. Tower. It's too hard to TP everyone in like that, and MP probably needs to get out of dodge as the Murano, I said before, has no mana, and about to pick up the eggs, so yeah, looks like they are just going to get out of town. MSS, a couple of couple of timber chains, and he's good to go. He gets the hell on out of there. Meanwhile, Murano ultimate activated, helping the rest of her teammates get the hell on out of there, and will be successful, so well played. Good team stuff for using that Moonlight Shadow. Gets them to safety right there. So the smoke unsuccessful for Freedom here at the top lane. I mean, there is still Skyrath up here, but he's going to pour it out before they maybe guess where he's at. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as if they, they feel like somebody's still up here, but as we see, obviously, that's not the case. So the Aegis is on uh, OD here, though. Does have that four staff now to go with the early hands of Midas. How about, uh, how about Faceless? I mean, we're expecting, yeah, he's going to be able to Yashi here, so getting that Manta ASAP makes sense, you think? Yeah, going into the Manta, he needs something to purge off this uh, Skyra E, so he may go in Yasha and then into the Diffusal afterward, but he's just going to be very, very squishy for a while, even if he does go for the uh, Yasha into the Diffusal. It's about the same goal as the Manta, so for quite a while he's going to be very squishy, easy to kill with Skyra Silence. He needs to be super duper careful. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane. Nope, just simply uh, boxing out here onto the Marana. Timbersaw is nearby, but also going to fall back before things get a little too crazy down here. So the momentum of NP as far as going kills left and right is going to slow down a little bit, but I think that's to their decision, really. Again, they're pretty content on farming up more now. They got the Blink Dagger onto Aoi 2000 here. Another 2,300 gold on top of that. Where is he going next? Is it the BKB route or what, a Chrysalis? Yeah, most probably into the BKB. Uh, this OD is, is quite strong versus the Sven right now. Once he has the BKB, he's going to be practically invulnerable. The only thing the OD really can do is astral the person who the Sven jumps and goes on. But without that, you know, the Sven may be looking to even jump the OD, so we can't do that. Puts him in a really, really nice position and makes the Sven basically unkillable, so he can just jump and initiate, draw a lot of fire, then BKB, and just be sort of this in the middle invincible force while the timber saw zips around and does a bunch of damage along with the bottom ags who yeah. almost has a blink as well oh timber is going to try to pour it out can they catch it no the imprisonment it looks like it's in cast animation for that but timber saw does actually make the escape and remains unkilled throughout this game and yeah now 3-0 and 4 record so they all get out the bottom tower a lot of objectives coming out right there but god look at these further items now being picked up bots just picked up by mirana as well uh, to go with that earlier on Ags that Eternal Levy was able to pick up. So, two minutes left on the Ags still. On the Aegis that, <laughs> excuse me, for for OD right here. Ags, that lasts forever, unless you destroy it or something. Um, yeah, continuing to farm, though, in the jungle off to the side. But, uh, I mean, what about the supporting cast of Freedom? Do they have really anything to be excited about? Doesn't seem like it, unfortunately. Omni Knight does have a mechanism, so, and that's good, but... Yes, yeah, uh, Omni has a mech, which is nice. Uh, he has the max level repel as well, so we can put that on the uh, OD. So that's why NP is split pushing right now, because uh, Freedom has a pretty nice timing right now, where they're strong at fighting with their max level repel, with the mech, the chrono, and the Aegis on the OD. So they're sort of split pushing, waiting that out, getting the BKB on their Sven. Looks like NP is going <laughs> to give up a kill here. Well, he got to kill himself, and oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Um, I mean, they killed him. There's that. He died. He's he died. Definitely dead. I think they can uh, be happy about that. And how sick would it have been if he juked down after he walked out of the sentry range? That would have been absurd. That, that they just been. Missed, missed both ults and ETPs out. <laughs> that would have been so ridiculous, yeah. But hey, they, they got him again. The communication probably could have been a little bit better right there from uh, from Freedom, but they get the kill. Now, those are two fairly long Radiance cooldowns, though, especially ODs. Uh, Chronosphere, another 90 seconds here, but obviously NP is very aware that those are on cooldown. And remember, Marana has those bots, so they're kind of pushing the top lane up here. I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they kind of joined together and looked to push the top lane in. I mean, the Aegis has got to be wearing off very soon here for OD as well. Yeah, we'll have to see. The Sven almost at BKB has a couple of the components. Yep, only needs the recipe left now, so about 100 gold. <laughs> All right. And then they may be looking to fight. A time. There you go. Purchased coming out. All right, so the Aegis has now gone away from OD. Feeling a little more naked as a result of that. Under Titan middle lane, just going to harass that stomp. And catches a sleep, but doesn't have support nearby to make the play. So OD should be fine. Yeah, Skyrath Mage ports in, but again, can't get there in time. But Rana's close. He does have an Invis rune actually active. Oh, is he trying to snipe this courier? I think so. Yep, yeah, yeah, maybe. No, it went the other way. He's instead going for Omni Knight back here. We're just really scouting things out. Going to wait for the teammate to come. He needs to be no. careful. He's almost in range of the sentry, so... Oh, oh goodness no. sakes. That was a really greedy arrow attempt. Very long distance right there, and actually, Omni Knight will get away. So, yeah, EE, -E, I think that, that was that was greedy, man. That distance. Dyer's Not surprised it didn't hit. Yeah, Mike was probably going to back after that camp, so looking for the short Radiant's timing they had, but not quite hitting it, and not going to get that pick off. He actually TPing bottom, so it looks like they're not really willing to defend that tower, and looks like they're still kind of scared of Freedom's timing right now, having the uh, the repel and the two big ultimates with the team fights and the tombstone as well, so MP just continuing to split the map and try and out-farm Freedom, which they have been doing for quite a while, almost up to a 10k lead. Oh, Skyrath, he's... The Jukes! I don't know who's trying to find who. I guess the Undying's trying to find the Skyrath there. But, I mean, Skyrath actually had support coming, whereas there's nothing there for Undying. So, <laughs> I kind of feel like that would have been bad for Undying. Yeah, the reverse Juke. Yeah. It's probably good that uh, he actually gets out of there, because, yeah, there's no tower to port to or anything. So, he would have been a dangerous spot, the oh. Chronosphere bought him. BSJ, that was a reach. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Missing. Swing and a miss, as they would say. And you can sort of see Freedom's mindset from like these kind of plays they're making. Like they can tell they're getting out farmed, they're getting pulled across the map, and they're missing their timing. And they're trying to go for these chronos, these really, really tight chronos that are hard to hit because they're just looking for something to happen. But MP realizes this and is just continuing to play across the map, beating them. And now they're going to lose the Undying as well. So MP just like, sort of like they, the, oh, maybe not. Oh, there we go. <laughs> But yeah, they're just, uh, just outmaneuvering them across the map and out-farming them. Yeah, I thought for a second Undying actually was going to live there too, but obviously Timbersaw is showing off that Blink Dagger as well, and that God Strength from Sven pushing in this lane so aggressively. Top lane, they're trying to catch Faceless Void, but he will get away. So that is the last Outer Tower already destroyed in favor of Team NP, as we're now just approaching the 25-minute mark at this time. So OD does have the Scythe now that he chooses to get with the... Uh, how about that? I mean, do you think that's actually the correct decision considering you're talking about the idea of lacking maybe a little bit of damage here? Is, is crowd control as a scythe the item that they needed here? Um, I do think so. A lot of times you see people go for like a drums and the hurricane, hurricane pike and then maybe into a blink and a hex afterward, but getting this hex early on is definitely something they needed. And it, you know, once again sort of plays to, you know, how this game is going and they can feel that they need to find some pickoffs. So looking for this hex early on gives them some more burst damage. You know, maybe he can even find a solo kill with his ult, but he is um he is very in on getting those pickoffs. But it does make him a stronger team fighter as well. Just an overall very good item on Odie the main. Oh, jump at the top lane on Odie. Speaking of the Mystic Flare, gets pushed out though. He's gonna survive as a result. As in comes on another Guardian Angel, even popped, using everything. Bryce is basically in the arsenal right there. Sven wants to keep going though. He has that God Strength up. It's gonna be wearing off with the Guardian Angel, and he does find. Undying, the stun on Omni Knight in the background, they catch both as a result. And now OD's in trouble, the Air Spitter gonna be used as well, the Chronosphere in the background, but it's like, alright, I do no damage, I gotta run. 
as all his team supports are basically dead. Crystal Maiden is alive, but not here just yet. She is running in, puts the frostbite out, but they catch Faceless. And the double kill for Sven, and here they go into the base. There's no buybacks. Faceless is the only one with the buyback. They're going to get Crystal Maiden as well. That's 100% of Rax right here. Possibly more. Yeah, and P after that uh, second game realized, hey, these guys are coming to play, so we better come to play too, and turned it back on, and this is the MP that we saw in the first game, playing really, really cleanly, understanding exactly what the other team wants to do with their draft, and flying around it perfectly, so they have no way to get back into the game. There we go with those melee racks, you do see Untying resurrecting, but again, even with the buyback of Faceless Void, it's just not worth using. There would be absolutely no point. Doesn't have a Chronos Fairy. It'd be minimal heroes with him, so they just let it go. And mission accomplished there for NP here at the top lane. So the 18 to 3 hero kill. Let's take a look at that net worth graph. I haven't done it yet. And, well, maybe I shouldn't have because it's kind of as expected and just uh, almost uh, scary for freedom, really. Almost a 20,000 gold lead overall. Only 27 minutes in. That, that is just uh, that's a painful lead if you're, uh, if you're freedom over there. Yeah, almost building into the Daedalus now as well on Sven, so has the capability to even one-shot, or not one-shot, but kill them within the Echo Saber, the Sven, I mean the uh, OD, or the Void, just tons of burst damage on him. Marana has 3.7k gold, so maybe going for the E-Blade for more burst potential, or also maybe going for a Diffusal on him, or you know some sort of a right-clicky build, because the uh, the burst build isn't really great versus an Omni Knight, versus an OE, heroes that can save, the Void can... You know, use his uh, time walk to purge it all off. So may go for more of a right clicky build on the bottom. What about the Rod of Atos here picked up by Skyrim? That's an item we do not see often, right? But what do you think of that's uh, the logic is there? Uh, I mean, it's just one of the better Skyrim Mage items. It allows you to actually threaten solo kills on a lot of heroes. Um, the item in itself is actually quite a good item. The slow is super long range and really annoying to play versus especially um, Freedom's cores, heroes that don't really buy BKB, so it is definitely very, very nice. It's just sort of an awkward item to buy. So if you do have a support like Skyrath that uses the ant, uses the HP, sort of uses all the components of it, and isn't a hero that particularly needs any other items, um, it can be quite nice to go into, so. Whoa. Oh my gosh, Murata just jumps in with that Starfall. She leaps out before too much happens. Timber's left goes to the party. There's the Air Splitter. In the midst of it, and Undyne's got a one left behind. Chronos Fury did catch Skyrath into the background, but he's throwing up with the Yule Scepter. Not going to be able to do too much. Okay, they do kill Skyrath back here, but he's losing teammates. Undyne goes down, and now BSJ needs to be careful himself. Sven with that God Strength. He's looking to maybe hit somebody, get that Echo Saber off. You see the uh, somebody was put under right there. Looks like the Omni Knight, and there's a Hex out of Sven. Sven's going to fall, actually. The Sanity's, Sanity's Eclipse right there. Freedom actually winning this fight. In fact, MSS now on the run has that Lotus Orb up. But he's keeping his distance as he loses Elder Titan. So a successful fight for Team Freedom, actually. Oh, but the show oh, it's not stolen. I thought he stole that for a second. But OD does pick up the Aegis. Eternal Envy was going for the snipe. Unsuccessful, though. So there's hope. There's hope for Freedom. Yeah, you can see the potential of, uh, we saw in that game two, game uh, with EG versus Cold, uh, Tombstone on that hill there. If you don't have vision of it, don't have heroes that are very good at hitting it. Which MP has terrible heroes at killing the Tombstone. Sven, Timbersaw, all of those heroes like to jump and burst heroes, not really great at hitting random things like Pugna Wards, the, uh, the Tombstone, stuff like that. So getting it on the cliff and those zombies just massively kiting the Sven. He only hit like three times on heroes during his entire BKB and then just getting massacred by the OD ult. Tomato really, really farmed now um, compared to the rest of his team and even compared to the MP core is still has a reasonable net worth, has the Hurricane Pike now as well, so Freedom with that fight actually in a reasonable position. 5k gold swing with that fight, so bringing it back down. Yeah, don't don't get us wrong, it's a lot of work to be done, of course, for Freedom right here, as far as ultimately coming through and uh, win this game, but that's a yeah, step in the right direction. They, they did the part of, all right, this game's not over at least. We definitely have hope. Now, again, you do see the top, you see those creep waves even pushing into the base, actually, so... Yeah, they are going to pour back and realize that uh, they, they got to deal with that rather than trying to go further forward right here. The secondary tower middle does remain alive as a result, and now NP is working out, so working their way out even. Uh, working out. Yeah, they're, they're working out, lifting weights, yo. While uh, they watch the World Series. <laughs> yeah. Almost done. What is, uh, who's got a Bloodthorn? That would be, uh... 
It's Owie, right? That's Owie, then. Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. How's that finished? Yep, really nice versus the, uh, the OD, can't repel himself, can't Guardian Angel, so allows you to just burst a couple of different heroes. Uh, if the Void has already used Manta, then it gives you more kill potential on him, and also gives you the guaranteed two crits. So, versus these heroes that have a lot of escape mechanisms, a lot of kitey spells, sort of stuff that's really annoying, uh, the, the Bloodthorn can be a viable choice over the Daedalus if they, don't have, uh, if they don't have heroes that just sort of sit there and allow you to jump on them without any trouble. Top lane, BSJ, on that faceless void, he gets away before. They're able to catch him, yeah, he saw him with the blink dagger as well. So again, as far as damage output goes, faceless is still not doing a lot, especially in that single target presence. But uh, now with the blink dagger, you figure he probably is going to progress more into damage here, probably what the defusal blade, I would assume. Damage well. Speaking of that, actually, you know, they're going up against an Omni Knight here on MP's side. Is Diffusal something that they can get? Like, Marana, I guess, would be the only candidate, really. Yeah, they may be looking to get a Diffusal on E. I really hope he goes for a right click build this game. I don't think going for the uh, E Blade Dagon build would be that good this game. I think going for more of maybe Diffusal into Neon or something like that would be uh, more viable, as, you know, like we said before, they have a lot of heroes that are very escapable, so the burst combo probably not able to kill people during that duration, so I, I think E would go into a defusal after this. We'll have to see, though. The mind of E is extremely complicated, and uh, and he'll, he'll make the right decision, I'm sure. So, Absolutely. Skywrath Mage middle. Oh, boy. He had to turn around. Yeah, he wants this creep. That's going to cost him his life. <laughs> he wanted that one creep, man. It was so tempting. He just kept running. He was definitely fine, but he, he really wanted that creep. He gets caught. He does not have a buyback, so that's a Skyrath death for 45 seconds. You do see top lane, Timbersaw's pushing it in. Uh, Eternal Envy was bottom lane, putting some pressure on, but is going to fall back. And I think that might be enough of a bait for Freedom to not be able to commit too much here. Yeah, NP is looking to fight. They better get out of town. Their Omni Knight is super far away. This could be bad for Freedom. Lotus Orb on himself. Frostbite on the Crystal Mid, and as a result, right that, the Hex, though, going through. The stomp in the back, and it did actually catch faces. Oh my god, there's that two shot that they were hoping for. And it comes through for Aoi 2000. And so, Faceless Boy does have a buyback if necessary. Undying, however, gonna be dying right here. And a mega kill for MSS, but yeah, that's the Bloodthorn for Sven. Yeah, putting in work, the double crit just completely exploded him. The Stomp barely missing Tomato, so getting away with that Aegis still intact. If he had got caught by the Stomp, maybe he would have gotten him twice. So not as bad as it could have been for Freedom, but they're going to lose all their map control again. They're going to take control of all these lanes and take control of this hill. It's a very nice area to control as Radiant. Whenever you have um, a lot of map controls, you can sort of sit on this hill. And especially whenever they have this top racks, it's super nice because this top lane is always going to push in. So they can play around this hill, get good vision, and it's really hard for Freedom to ever move out or make moves. And NP can get these two lanes of farm, they can get both Ancients, yeah. and it's just a really nice place for you to play around, especially with this top lane down. It uh, it gives NP a lot of control over the map. Do they have any gem? I mentioned, no, not gem it looks like, but maybe something that they're going to be looking to get. Juby, uh, Crystal Maiden does have a gem over there. On uh, Freedom side at least, but yeah, nothing on the side of NP just yet. But I mean, as we see, uh, there really is nothing other than a way deep in here does Freedom have for but I guess those those are the kind of wards right now that they not necessarily need. They would rather have more of the defensive wards, I would feel like. But yeah, they ended up placing them pretty aggressive right there. We'll see if they can get some defensive ones up. And good to go. Odi does have 3,000 gold saved up now. As the Hurricane Pike finished, of course. So see how he continues to follow his item build. Faceless Void repels on him as he's pushing out the middle lane here. Uh, 2,700 gold saved up. So some potentially decent items to come here on the side of uh, Freedom. You also got Guardian Greaves finished on IX Mike. And the Blink Dagger, as well as the Hand of Midas. Let's go with that. But MSS, has he died yet? Absolutely not. 5-0-9 on this Timber Saw. So he does have a Lincoln Sphere now. Yeah, as well as the Lotus Orb. So the Hex from the OD not going to be able to put in work versus Timber Saw. He even uh, got the Lotus Orb on himself before the Hex went off in that last fight. So Odie Hexing himself, this Timber is just free to uh, to run rampant in these fights. Unless he gets cornered on the edge and the Odie is able to just pile the hits in with this uh, soon to be bought, most probably Moonshard in the Odie. Other than that, there's really no way this Timber can die. 
So NP probably uh, probably waiting for Roshan, you'd figure. Gonna get that Aegis, or at least ideally. And then try to actually break further into the base game. They already have the top down. There's the Ghost Scepter on Marana. Had it for a little bit even, so you know you're talking about that earlier. You'd rather see the right click build. It doesn't seem like he agrees. In fact, has the Eth Blade finished right there, so. No right click build. Yeah, we'll see. It's it's it's. Uh, I, I can understand why he's doing it. The way NP want to play these fights, they want to jump in with the Sven. They want to blow up one hero with him. E jumps on another hero. Timber jumps on another. You know, they just sort of kill a whole bunch of heroes instantly at once with a lot of their spells. So it synergizes well with their draft, and uh, it's definitely viable. If uh, if these fights go long, then those are the fights that Freedom have a chance in. So you want to play to what your lineup strengths are in these team fights, and that's what NP is doing with this uh, E blade build. Oh, big jump here. Yeah, nothing gonna happen just yet. There we go. Sven jumps on the face of just like that. He's <laughs> dead once again. 1100 crit. Even with Omni Knight there trying to assist. Down goes Omni Knight. Down goes Crystal Maiden. And OD in the background. I mean, they all have buybacks other than Omni Knight, I guess. OD, though, he is gonna have a fall right here. No, nice hurricane bite. Not gonna matter. He gets taken out. Undying also falls. Triple kill. GG. Well played coming out. It looks like it will be official. NP take it out freedom here two games to one and that means they will match up against evil geniuses in the winter bracket finals and it'll be complexity versus freedom in the losers bracket portion so hell of a match there but NP NP excuse me is it indeed successful in the end so Whew. what a series though what a, what a, what a night oh, yeah, yeah the last series was definitely a roller coaster looking initially like NP was gonna stomp then uh, then Freedom coming back with a, with a nice game two, playing quite well. And game three, NP asserting their dominance once again and showing they are the superior team. But Freedom definitely playing quite well. Tomato, uh, I think, stands out. Freedom played very, very clean all three of the games, even whenever they lost. It didn't feel like the game was sort of, uh, was like mostly his fault. You know, it wasn't one of those games where you could pick one particular player and say, oh, it was his fault. But Tomato playing very cleanly throughout the series. No, oh, yeah, that definitely is a player that I look forward to seeing more of uh, for this uh, team freedom over here. But uh, and again, we will get the chance at least uh, to see how they match up against complexity, as we talked about in the loses bracket. Now, moving forward, but NP versus EG, and you know, a lot of people are going to be excited for that one when it happens. When it actually happens, I, I can't say for certain. I know that you know with all these other events going on, it's not the easiest to schedule these matches here. So, uh, and I'm sure they're going to figure that out ASAP, though. And, uh, you know, get that information, whether you check on Liquipedia or wherever it may be. So, um, But that is going to do it for us tonight here on the broadcast. Again, a good uh, six matches in total that we got to cover and had a lot of fun with that. And at least I did. I, I assume you did over there. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good my gig games, you know. Yeah, I know. It uh, helped that we had some, uh, some good American Dota coming at us. Nothing like good American Dota. Yeah, except for FYM hot sauce. Nothing like that either. Nothing like FYM hot sauce. That stuff is hot and it's really good, I'm sure. I'm but sure. <laughs> if I had some right now, I'd be, be, be eating it and stuff. So, uh, All right. Uh, Enough of the sellout mode. Um, to wrap up, uh, I always like to give us, my co-caster especially, a chance. Any, any shout-outs, anything you want to say before we do officially wrap up here? Uh, thanks for watching, laddies. And a dotes. I stream at twitch.tv slash ccnc02, sellout. Uh, that's not sellout, that's uh, that's good information. So you stream there, your, your Twitter, what about that? Same thing, just a uh, different beginning, it's not Twitch. What does ccnc stand for? Uh, cool, calm, and collected. Awesome. That's what I wish I was. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's you kind of have to remind yourself there about your name. All right, so myself, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank uh, CCNC as my co-caster. Um, and thank, uh, thank all the fans for tuning in, and also BTS as well as uh, Dota Pit for giving us the opportunity for this coverage here. I know, uh, you know, it's not, not the easiest to get these opportunities, so really do appreciate that. And uh, um, as far as where you can find myself, twitch.tv slash breakycpk, YouTube as well, the same thing. All the social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter, that you can check out. So, uh, I myself, I'm breaking more into the Dota 2 scene especially, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this broadcast. I know, uh, personally, I do have a lot to work on still when it comes to uh, knowledge and everything, as well as uh, my camera control may have been a little, little, little shaky at times, but uh, do my best to improve, and I uh, look forward to all the feedback and, uh, and of course, all the, all the words I'm going to be getting here, the, the words of wisdom. So... 
Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good night. Until next time, the American Dota Pit Season 5 qualifying coverage coming to an end here today. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Oh,